Hey everyone, welcome back. So this is a direct follow-up to the SVM math video. So in that video, I demonstrated all of the math that's behind SVM, and we formulated the hard margin SVM problem. I wanted to take this separate video and formulate the soft margin SVM problem. And in all honesty, this is the more important case because with real data, we're not gonna have such clean linear separability as we need in the hard margin case. So that said, I would make sure to watch the hard margin video first because I introduced a lot of important math and concepts in that video. And then once you're done with that, I would go ahead and watch this brief video on soft margin SVM. So I won't go over all the same concepts again, but the setup is that we are trying to predict whether or not a student gets into their top choice medical school. So that response is given by yi, a binary variable who is negative one if they do not get in and plus one if they do get in. And to predict that, we're going to be using a vector of predictors called xi for each student. Now in two dimensions, we might just plot their GPA and their MCAT as we did in the previous video. And for all these green triangles, these are students who do get into their top choice school. So we see that generally these are students with high GPAs and high MCATs. And for these red X's are students who do not get in. And generally these are students with lower scores for both of our variables. But in this video, we're going to have it be the real world and it's not such a clean separation as we saw in the last video. We have students who do get high GPA and high MCAT such as this student here labeled as three and they do not get in for whatever reason because there's other factors that affect your admission as well and the other side of the story too right we have students who have low GPAs and MCATs such as this small triangle down here but they do get in because of the other factors we were talking about so this is the real world this is messy we still want to use SVM but we cannot use the hard margin SVM because it just doesn't know what to do when we can't achieve a clean linear separability, which is the case here. So we need to make our margins a little bit more fuzzy. We need to say that, okay, I want you to classify things as well as possible, but I need to be willing to accept a certain level of mistakes. But I'm gonna give you certain penalties for mistakes based on how big they are. And that is the spirit of soft margin SVM. So the quantity that is the driving force behind soft margin SVM is the hinge loss. And the hinge loss is one of the types of loss I covered in my loss functions video, which I'll link below. But it basically looks like this. It looks like a scary mess equation, but I'm going to break it down for you. So let's label the various parts of this equation to get a better idea of the story that it's trying to tell us and why it's doing the job we want it to do. Yi, again, is the true class of the student. So this is one or negative one. This other quantity is the score that we're giving to the student. So I'm gonna call it score, but I'll explain exactly what it means. So this quantity is W, our vector of weights, times Xi, which is the predictor for any given student, minus B, which is our intercept. Now, if we look at the three lines here, as we said in the last video, they each have different equations. The top line is W dot X minus B is equal to one. The decision boundary is that quantity equals zero. And the lower line is that quantity is equal to negative one. Notice that that quantity, which is W dot X minus B, is exactly the quantity that I've written right here, which I've called score. The reason I'm calling it a score is because anything that is on this side of this top blue line has that score or that quantity greater than one, because this line is where that score would be equal to one. So anywhere above that line, it would be greater than one. Now with the same logic, we can say that this bottom line is where that score is equal to negative one. So any observation we see who is below that line is going to get a score that is less than negative one. And anyone who is within the margin, so which is below this top blue line, but above this bottom blue line is going to get a score between negative one and one. So it's going to be between zero and one for this region and it's gonna be between zero and negative one for this region. Now, why is this important? Why do we need to introduce this concept of score to continue telling our story? Because we want the classifier to behave in a certain way. We want it to say that any observation, which is very far away from this top line, so who is all the way over here, let's say, gets confidently predicted as a positive one. So for that observation, the score will be very, very positive. So we better have that the class of that observation is actually positive as well. On the other hand of the story, we have that if there's an observation way down here, the score of that student would be very negative, so much less than negative one. So we better have that the truth about that observation is negative one. And so I think it's even easier to get a sense of this hinge loss by just looking at the couple of observations that I've labeled here and see what the hinge loss comes out to for each of those observations. So let's look at these four observations. The first one is this green triangle. Now, we're generally happy about this green triangle if this is our classifier here because it is well inside the region that is above this blue line and it is truly a student who does get into their top choice medical school. So let's work out the math a little bit. So for this student, so for student one, 
it's going to be max of 0, 1, minus, and their true class is equal to 1. And what is their score going to be? Their score is going to be above 1 because they are above this blue solid line here. So if you work out the math here, this comes out to 0 because the second term is negative. Therefore, max of 0 and a negative number is 0. And so we're saying that the loss for that student is 0, which means that we are happy with that and we're not assigning it any loss. So far, so good. Let's look at the next student in our set. Let's take a look at student number two. Student number two is basically the opposite story. So they are below this lower blue line. And we're also happy about that because they're on the correct side of the margin. They're on the negative one side of the margin. Let's see what their hinge loss comes out to. So their hinge loss comes out to max zero, one. Their yi is equal to negative one. So this sign flips to a plus. And this score is going to be less than negative one based on the story that we just told. So we put a less than negative one here. And if you work out this math, this quantity also will be less than zero. Therefore, the max is going to be zero, which again, makes sense because we would like to assign a loss of zero to person number two because we're happy about the way the classifier is performing on them. So no loss there. Here's where the story gets more interesting. Let's look at observation number three. So this is a student who does not get into their top choice medical school, but based on the classifier that we currently are looking at, they are categorized on the wrong side of the margin. So we would like their loss to be high. Let's see what happens. So we're gonna have max of zero, one minus their yi is equal to negative one, so the sign flips to a plus. But their score is going to be greater than one because based on the classifier I'm looking at, they are on this side of the margin. Therefore, I have a greater than one here. And here, this is going to be greater than one. Therefore, this is telling the story that for that person, I'm assigning a loss that is greater than one. I am giving a penalty to the model because it's not doing a good job for that person. And for the last sample, let's look at somebody who is inside the margin. So with soft SVM, we can actually have observations that are inside the margin. So for observation number four, notice that this person actually does get classified correctly because anyone on the lower side of this dashed line gets classified as negative one which is what this observation is, and anyone on the other side would get positive one. So this observation is correct, but SVM says that we still want to give it a penalty because it is too close for comfort. It is too close to this dashed line. It is inside the margin. So we want to give it a little bit of a penalty, but not as big as we did for the previous one. Let's see what the hinge loss does. So for this last one here, it's max of zero, one plus and the sign flips again because it's a negative observation. So notice that this score for this guy right here would be something between zero, which is the dashed line, and negative one, which is this bottom line here. So the score is gonna be between negative one and zero, which is exactly what we see here. If we work out this math, then the quantity of the hinge loss is gonna be something between zero and one. This is exactly what we want. This is what we want because we're saying that I need to give you some loss because although I'm classifying you correctly, I'm barely doing that. Therefore, I wanna give you a loss between zero and one but I don't want to give you a loss that is greater than one as we did with someone who is clearly misclassified. So that's the story of the hinge loss told through four examples. And you can come up with more examples here and try to go through this exercise further for yourself. Let me show you a graphical depiction of the hinge loss. Maybe that's going to help you out if you're still having a little bit of trouble grasping it. So I've plotted the hinge loss here. On the x-axis is this quantity, which we've been calling the score times the true. So score times the true, and the y-axis is the loss itself. So notice that any time this multiplication works out to something greater than one, that means that that's somebody who is on the correct side of the margin, so we wanna give them a loss of zero. They are not problematic. We don't want to give a penalty to our model for those people. So that's why the loss is exactly zero for those people. Now, anyone for whom this quantity is less than zero, so anyone on this left side of zero, is going to have a loss that is greater than one. That's exactly what we saw for case number three here. These are people who are just straight up on the wrong side of the margin. So we want to give a rather big penalty to these people. The interesting part of the hinge loss, I think, is the people who are between zero and one. So if your multiplication of these two things is between zero and one, that means that actually you are on the right side of the decision boundary, but you're inside the margin. So you're on the right side of the decision boundary, but you are inside the margin. Therefore, we're going to still give you a little bit of a loss because we're not comfortable, we're not too comfortable with that situation. So we're gonna get a loss between zero and one. All right, so that's the story that hinge loss is trying to tell. So that was the hardest part of this video is just kind of getting an intuition about why this quantity of hinge loss is so crucial to our soft margin SVM. 
The final thing we'll look at in this video is the equation, the mathematical formulation for the model of soft margin SVM. Soft margin SVM is given by minimizing the following quantity. So I want to pick a W and a B. I want to pick a vector of weights W and a intercept B such that I'm minimizing the sum of these two terms. And these two terms tell the exact story we want to tell. The first term is summing over all of our observations from 1 to n, so everybody who's in our training set. And the thing you're looking at in here is literally just me copying the hinge loss formula here. And then we divide by n. So this is the average hinge loss of a classifier across the entire training set. Of course, we would like that to be as small as possible. We want as small of a hinge loss across the entire training set as we can get. But that's not the end of the story. We also want to, in the spirit of SVM, to maximize the margin, which as we saw in the previous video, is analogous to minimizing the magnitude of W. So we also want to add a plus lambda times the magnitude of W squared here, so that we can also work on maximizing the size of this margin. So this formula, although if you look at it blindly, it's going to be confusing, is telling a very interesting story. It's saying that I'm trying to do two things simultaneously when I have real world data. The first thing I want to do in the spirit of SVM is to maximize the margin. I want to maximize the separability between the two classes. And that's what you're seeing in the second term here. But I know that in real world, I'm going to have a little bit of misclassification. So this first term is basically saying that I want the loss that comes from that misclassification to be kept in check, to be as small as possible. So that's what's going on with this minimization sum you're seeing here. And the last thing I'll say is what is this parameter lambda? This parameter lambda is a positive number that allows us to tune how much we care about each of these two things relatively. So do we care a lot about maximizing the margin or do we care a lot about allowing misclassification errors? So this lambda allows you to choose that trade-off. Okay, so that was soft margin SVM. I hope that between these three videos, so the intuition SVM video, the hard margin SVM video, and the soft margin SVM video, you have a much clearer idea about how SVM works in the real world and all the things that are about SVM. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe for more videos just like this. Please leave any comments with questions below and see you next time.